So welcome everyone. Uh, we're going to be uh, presenting you MamoQ 9.9 .9, uh, uh, with uh, Veronica and Mariana. And I'll start out by uh, introducing some advanced features to our regex assistant. Uh, as you remember, regex assistant was introduced in 9.8 and immediately after it was re uh, released, uh, we started a general survey. Uh, we reached out to you, uh, to our users uh, on Facebook and various other social media platforms. And we elicited some, uh, some user feedback to understand uh, what you like, what you didn't like, what you had trouble using, uh, and what your potential pain points were as far as the new uh, feature uh, goes. So based on that feedback, uh, we went back and, and uh, made some changes and actually we validated our previous concepts because we, for the most part, we had the very same ideas, uh, what advanced features to add to Regex Assistant. So uh, this, is, this is what we ended up with in 9.9. Uh, we expanded this highlighting option that we introduced for uh, the advanced find and replace dialog. And now it's available for the quick find and quick find and replace dialogs as well. As you can see uh, on the bottom right uh, corner, there are these two uh, highlight options, one that's, uh, that turns it on and one that removes uh, the highlights from uh, the text. So in this uh, uh, transcript of uh, the third uh, season of uh, Young Sheldon, in this transcript, I look for the name Sheldon. And as you can see in, uh, in rows 42 and 43, uh, we have Sheldon uh, highlighted. So many of you appreciated this new highlight feature. Hopefully uh, you will appreciate that, that now it's available and quick find. Moving on to the actual regex assistant, uh, we thought uh, hard and fast as to how to um, organize your, uh, your regexes or how, how to help you organize your regexes based on your feedback. And we ended up uh, with the idea of using labels. So we introduced labels uh, to regexes, as you can see, both uh, under the um, uh, regex library as well as your uh, edit your regexes. And we also introduced uh, a manage labels dialog uh, where you can batch edit uh, your, uh, your regexes as far as the, the labels go. You can remove and add new ones uh, in batches. So it's, it's really easy, it's really a breeze. Uh, to organize your own uh, labels and and, uh, and and so that you can uh, find your regexes as, as easy as possible. Typically, you would use labels, uh, you know, to to designate maybe the, the topic of that uh, regex or maybe who is it who it was from, or or some other sources uh, that you want to designate. We also uh, are introducing the smart search function. Uh, that's available uh, in the regex library, as well as your own regex is the ed ed edit your regex library dialog. So as, as you begin to type in, uh, the new logic will look for uh, the input, both in the name of the regexes, as well as uh, in, the, in the labels, as you can see on the screen. So it really helps you find uh, the regex that you're looking for. We expect you to have uh, maybe uh, a few dozen regexes if you're really into this tool, uh, in addition to the 30 odd uh, built in regexes that we have. So, we, we really wanted to help you find uh, the regexes that you need. Uh, based on user feedback, uh, we are introducing uh, at the top of the list uh, in the regex library the last selected regex because uh, uh, from some of our users, we receive feedback that it's once you insert the regex into the find what uh, or the replace with field, and you begin to twink, uh, tinker with them, it's really hard sometimes to remember which exactly it was from the list of built-in regexes. So if you wanted to go back and see what you changed because you, you've done way too much stuff, uh, it will help you. This specific line, the last selected regex, will help you remember what you're working on, what you selected the last time, and you can always go back to that um, if you want to continue to, to edit it. Um, we, are, we are also introducing description. Description that by default shows up uh, 
uh, as a tooltip. So if you open up uh, your regex library and you scroll down and you, and you uh, hover over one of the uh, regexes, uh, you will see all these labels name and the labels themselves and also the description. Um, as of 9.9, .9, we introduced uh, plentiful description for every single built-in regex uh, to help you understand what they do, how they can be modified uh, to, to best suit your needs. So, uh, and, and as you can see, we, are, we introduced uh, the description field um, in the edit regex dialog as well. So once you create your custom regex or you modify one of the built-in regexes uh, to create your own, like in this particular example, I modify the regex that finds a number plus unit of measurement, and I inserted kilogram uh, here, and I saved it as my own regex. So I entered into the description, customized built-in uh, plugin, uh, but this is for the kilogram uh, to find this combination in the, in the text. So we believe that it will help immensely. Um, not only to better organize your regexes, but also to find the most relevant one that you need. And why would you need that? Uh, one would assume that you would remember your own regexes anyways, right? Well, uh, it looks like that uh, a lot of our users would like to share regexes as we, as we expected, and we are really thrilled to hear that. So uh, we are introducing advanced import and advanced uh, export capabilities. So, uh, so you can uh, save your regexes, uh, send it to someone who can then import it uh, into their memo queue. And as you can see, uh, we offer you uh, batch import options. So once you navigate to the XML file that you want to import, you can select which one uh, of the regexes inside the XML file you want to import. So from the four uh, on the screen, I selected the bottom two. And I also click the checkbox, remove labels on import because uh, it's, uh, it's not relevant uh, to me uh, that the label from Tamash is there. Uh, I want to add uh, maybe uh, something. So uh, it's really up to you uh, what you want to do. Uh, you can just remove all the labels that come from, uh, from the regex uh, XML file, and you can just add any custom label that you, that you wish. So it's, it's really a breeze to use. Uh, when you want to send your regexes uh, to fellow translator or you want to share the regexes among uh, you know, co-workers, uh, you don't necessarily have to export uh, all the regexes within the regex uh, library. You can just select some of them uh, once you located them using the, the smart search if you want to. Uh, you can select as many as you want uh, and then click export selected regexes. And here you can also remove uh, labels. So for instance, if I wanna send um, my regexes to a fellow translator, uh, that other translator may not necessarily be uh, interested in my labels that I classified them as, you know, who it was from, like from Kevin or from Shani, or whether it's, it's a number related regex or, or stuff like that. So you can just strip your regexes from the labels uh, and then send it to someone else. And the highlight of, uh, of this new development was that you guys asked for something else other than uh, this uh, copy to clipboard option that we offered in 9.8. You wanted to have a proper button that will send uh, the regex that you, uh, that you edited uh, in the regex assistant. Uh, to, this, to the space or to the place in MemoQ <clears throat> uh, where you want to insert it to. So we have a logic behind this button. There's quite a bit of stuff packed into there. Uh, basically, this button uh, is on the lookout uh, for the fields uh, where uh, regex is available. And it remembers the last field that the regex assistant uh, icon was uh, present, the last field that you clicked into. So in this specific case, as you can see, it says insert regex to filter uh, and source in, in parentheses. So once I click here, uh, the, uh, the regex in the find what uh, field immediately uh, uh, copies into the source uh, side of the filtering uh, field. 
And uh, if for some reason, uh, the regex system cannot determine uh, which, which one was the last uh, field that you used, or maybe that window is already closed, then uh, it will say that it's not applicable. Uh, so it can't really figure it out. So you need to click into the field where you want to uh, insert uh, the regex, or you can click the copy to clipboard icon still, and then use that to move your regexes. The reason why we need to do this uh, uh, with this button is that because the regex assistant uh, window is a floating window, so you can leave it on just like the quick find uh, window and you can work whatever you wanna work on and go back to the regex assistant and, and continue your regex editing. So uh, the, the regex uh, interface below the regex assistant can actually change uh, multiple times and the regex system can still be on your screen. So hopefully you will, you will uh, experiment with that and you will find it extremely useful. It was really a thrill for us to see all your feedback and, and to prioritize those and see you know, what you guys really wanted to have uh, in this feature. So I really hope that those who were, those who were involved in the uh, research and discovery phases of this uh, feature and also provided their feedback, you guys will find it useful and we'll spread the word uh, that it's worth using MamoQ 9.9 uh, with the added regex assistant feature. Moving on to the next topic, it's Antidote again. Uh, just a brief uh, announcement. Last time I, I owed you uh, still a feature and I promised that we will deliver. So now, uh, Antidote uh, works in WebTrans even with track changes, as you can see on the screenshot. So those of you who have uh, tried your hands uh, with uh, Antidote and WebTrans integration, uh, you can now have the full integration in MamoQ 9.9. We also added a new browser support. Uh, it now works uh, with Firefox in Windows. So now you have a total of uh, three the browser uh, supported uh, with Windows and two browsers uh, with Mac. Some other things, how you wanna work smarter and not harder. Another uh, popular idea that comes from our idea portal was uh, a request for new filtering option on the grid. Uh, as you can see the uh, the current behavior is, is this. Uh, you look for the name Sheldon uh, in, in the filtering uh, field, then you hit enter, then you have the result. Uh, and because the current behavior is such that uh, it's a filter within the filter, uh, you will see that uh, uh, the, uh, if you filter for no, that will only find a single uh, rule because it will filter for all those rows where Shelton is, is present. And within those rows, it will uh, filter for no in the second step. Um, many of you on the ideal portal said that you would like to have this behavior changed. Uh, some of you said uh, you prefer the old behavior. So we made this an option. There's this uh, new checkbox, clear previous filter result. Uh, by default, it's uh, it's off, so it's, it's the original behavior, filter within the filter, if you will. But uh, if you click this checkbox, this is what, uh, what it's like. Uh, for every single uh, new filtering, you will have the previous uh, filter results cleared and the, uh, the filter will apply uh, to uh, all the content uh, that's, uh, that's within, the, uh, within the document. So really hope that uh, you will like this too. Your setting is stored in the user profile, so you don't need to change it every time you use it. Once you, you, you pick your preference, it will stay on. And I hand it uh, over to uh, my fellow project, uh, product managers uh, with the import filters. Yeah, hello. Um, do you see my screen? Yes, we do. Okay, and the one I wanted to share was the other one. <laughs> yeah, I'm sharing the bottom one. Okay, so hello, sorry. Um, yeah, so a couple of small improvements 
within import filters. Uh, yep. Uh, one of them that now we import the alternative text that is added for images in DOCX, XLSX, and PPTX formats. Alternative text uh, is, a, is an accessibility feature. So people uh, who have trouble seeing with some visual impairment, uh, they can also uh, have the content of an image read out aloud for them. And uh, luckily it is gaining more and more track that, uh, that uh, people are supposed to add those alternative text uh, for images. So right now, these are the three formats we import them from. But of course, if we get any kind of a request, then we can, we can extend it. Uh, and the other thing is kind of, I don't know, geeky. Uh, there are two open XML uh, standards uh, within ISO. Uh, one of them is the strict open XML. The other is the transitional open XML. And the second one is that is actually used by Office, Microsoft Office. So that's why that is uh, more widespread and that's why we all only supported those so far, but from now on, we also support strict open XML. I don't think you will actually notice. You would only notice this when it didn't work, but now it does. Okay, a tiny thing around progress reports. Okay, what on earth is a progress report? Let me remind you. Progress report uh, is created uh, from among the reports. Um, and it looks like what you see down here. Uh, it is, I would, I would honestly, I would rather call it a status report. It gives you uh, an overview of how your document stands at that very moment when you create that, pro uh, that progress report. And it shows various statuses of the document. Uh, you can, and obviously the segments, the words, the characters uh, that are in those statuses. Um, you can also create it if uh, in statistics, you click the show counts and the, you check those checkboxes, the show counts and the status reports. Uh, if you click these, uh, then, then a progress report will be created and stored among your reports. So you, you end up at the same place, uh, regardless of if you use the create new report now option or you go through statistics. Um, now the change uh, may not be very, very apparent at once, uh, but the changes here, fragments uh, and machine translated uh, segments uh, used to be collapsed or used to, or sometimes we only showed one of them. Uh, it's been a while that they are now, they have been separated uh, in the status cell of each, of each segment, but now they are separated in the progress report too. So these are tiny changes, uh, but, uh, but for some people, I know this has been a, a long time coming. Now, some... Uh, this is again just some uh, some UI or maybe UX or just ease of life changes uh, regarding activation, which is code word for how how do I get a license for my desktop client? Now, depending uh, on your situation, you can get your client get your license. Uh, because you are using a trial license, you're just checking it out, or you might have bought one, or you might be using a license uh, from a server, a mobile license, an ELM or a CAL license. And this is typically true for someone who's actually works for a company that owns a server, or someone who is doing freelance work for a company that owns a server. Uh, and we cleaned up this process a little bit. So the first, uh, when, you, when, you, when you choose which way you wanna go. Okay, so all this happens when you, <clears throat> sorry, uh, most of the time this happens when you uh, install a MemoQ on a new server. Uh, 
But if you regularly work uh, for companies that are giving you a license, then you see this wizard a lot more. So on the left, you will see the old interface and on the, on the right, you see the new one. Uh, just tiny changes. Uh, we made the phrasing a little clearer here. Uh, instead of this long, long text, it's just free trial. Uh, I have a license. And this third option is where we really made a uh, change, uh, but you will see a bit later what it actually means. So regarding the trial <coughs> option, not much changed. We are still asking for uh, the same data that we would like to know about people who are interested in MemoQ. We got rid of the phone number. Uh, however, if you already bought uh, MemoQ, then we know all this about you. So we are not asking it again because we know it. Uh, and if you, if you uh, get your license from a server, then uh, you had to go through the trial way, trial road, uh, but now you can go straight to uh, adding the server address where you're getting your license from, uh, and you can add your credentials below it, depending on what that server, server is and how you are, but it's just a regular uh, login to the server thing. So this was it for me. And uh, now it's Mariana's turn. Okay. Can Let you take over? Share my screen, yeah. Okay, do you see my screen? The right one. <laughs> I hope so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so in the last couple of minutes, we are talking uh, about the user approval flow related to the single sign-on uh, users. So about new users, how they get approved on your MemoQ server. So firstly, um, okay. So the firstly, let's have a small recap. Uh, what is it all about? This is about the MemoQ server users authentication that has been improved by adding OIDC based authentication methods. So companies are able to use their company-wide authentication method also for their MemoQ server. This has been there for a while now. Um, you can use Active um, Windows Active Directory, Okta and Azure. Um, introducing Google and Microsoft as identity providers made possible to switch the authentication also for those users who are not members uh, of the company system, like freelance translators. So basically, until now, when an OIDC-based authentication was set up on a MemoQ server, you could let a user log in just by providing them a unique URL. Uh, this did not change. Uh, the change is that until now, this user became a disabled user. So it, they could um, uh, um, log in themselves without a native MemoQ user, without having uh, a native MemoQ user created beforehand. So this user became an, a disabled user, um, having no rights and being not member of any groups. This was sometimes a bit difficult for um, administrators and user managers to keep track of those people who are already approved on the MemoQ server as, a, as an uh, approved user or and, and have those users on tech who are really new users. So the new uh, approval flow that is available now only on MemoQ Web helps server admins to identify and manage those new users. So from now on, when a new user logs in with their SSO account into the MemoQ server, that user is automatically given a pending status. Uh, and then you have to activate these new users before they can start working on a MemoQ project. But if you don't want to let them into your server, 
uh, you can reject them. Um, as opposed to deleted users, rejected users won't be able to sign up again. So how to do this? MemoQ admins may provide a mail address or more, up to 10, where they want to receive a notification about new users signed up with their OIDC account. And all recipients will receive those um, notifications each time a new user signs up. Um, certainly on the users in the MemoQ server administrator and uh, project managers group will be able to access those new users. So the person in charge for approving the users clicks on see pending user accounts in MemoQ web and uh, they will be prompted the list of pending users in the administration tab where they can enable or reject those users. Enabled users will be notified through email about their activation. There are also a couple of small improvements in MemoQ web user management interface, like the improved uh, filtering options. Um, so now it is possible to filter not only for the new user statuses, but also for OIDC account type separately. So that is you can filter, let's say for your Azure, Okta or MemoQ server users separately. Also, sorry, bulk editing of users um, has been improved. From now on, um, you can also change account status in bulk, uh, but only if the selected users have the same status. So for example, you can filter for all pending users and enable them in bulk. Exporting filtered users uh, became clearer, so now you can filter users and export the selected users with appropriate status information. And two more amendments. Resources API is also available for access through your OIDC account. And if your company uses the one login for authentication, now system administrators are able to configure it more easily on their MemoQ server. So I think that's, that's for today. Uh, thank you for your attention. And let's see the questions, I think. Yeah, I'll start with the first one. Um, Dave Neib uh, asked about uh, the regex assistant. Can insert regex manage to insert, find and replace regex operations? Yes, uh, so it will uh, insert it into uh, whatever uh, input field there is where the Rx icon is visible. Um, so if it's a replace operation and you have uh, uh, both the find and the replace uh, open uh, uh, in, the, in the find and replace dialog, then, then both of them will be inserted. If it's only the find, then, then uh, only the first row, the find uh, side will be uh, uh, added. So it, uh, the logic works, uh, I guess, uh, quite intelligently. Uh, just play around with it and, and you'll see. Uh, and I also answered another question about the, uh, uh, the new filtering option in writing to the anonymous attendee. So you can see that in writing, that's a little too long to explain. Um, let me see if there's anything. Um, I think the rest, the rest of the questions are for... Yeah, let, let me take yeah. over now and uh, then if, if more come in, yeah, we can do this. this. Okay, so uh, Nikolai asks whether we would add a row with weighted word count to progress reports. I haven't yet heard this request. Please send it in. It's a feature request. Uh, I'm I'm happy to <clears throat> to hear and and think about it and also <clears throat> I'm sorry I'm I'm I I will I will also be interested in the why what what do you need it for uh, but we're happy to take a look at it uh, and now I I pass the mic to Mariana and we'll check if I have more 
Yes, okay, there is a question about SSO for customer portal. Unfortunately, not yet. Uh, we've been dealing with the, with the question, so definitely this is a, this is a, a need. There is a need for this, uh, but it would need um, um, a bigger effort, so uh, it needs a little bit more of, uh, of, of research, this. Uh, project managers and administrators, yes, both of them are able to, to activate pending users. So anyone who is able to access user administration um, on MemoQ web is entitled for, for a changing status of users. And there is a third question about the... Um, um, so it says so we can export user lists with a specified delimiter. Uh -huh. Onboarding teams has been entering data with commas and semicolons. Um, exporting users is now available in, in a CSV format, but let's talk about this later. Okay, so it's, um, yeah, this need, need a couple of more questions, I think. Okay, I think I, Veva, would you like to take over with other questions? Oh yeah, I, I clicked the long, wrong button. Yeah, so okay. let, me, let me take over the next one because it's, I'm gonna be popular even though I have nothing to do, do about <laughs> it. So Fabian is asking whether uh, Google Documents uh, will be um, translatable in MemoQ. Okay, it's gonna be half, I'm gonna be half popular. We are looking at it. Uh, is what I can say. Um, I don't think, I mean, I, I don't think it's going to be going to prove uh, very complicated, uh, but it's a, it's a fourth colleague, colleague of ours, Adam, who is, who is working on it, but he is actually working on it at the moment. I haven't the faintest idea about the timeline, but uh, yes, it's on the close part of the roadmap. Okay, there are some more uh, ideas about how about this and that in Regex Assistant. Please submit those as ideas. Uh, this is not the other uh, place uh, for ideation. So we have the idea portal um, and uh, we welcome uh, your, your input there. Yes, and there was a comment from Birgit about the exporting of users, but I don't think it's a question. It's rather a comment that it's, uh, exporting of users has been possible for some time. Yes, uh, uh, there has been a couple of improvements. So we added the account type and other useful information that proved um, uh, to be nicer and, and, and more useful. If you would like to have the import functionality, um, yes, this should be submitted as a, as a feature request, I think. Jacques, Mariana, if you, if you click the done on the ones that you actually answered, okay. then our list would clean up because <laughs> I'm, losing, I'm losing the thread. <laughs> But what I did want to answer, yeah, uh, Norlan is asking, will it be possible to get a statistic report for the users working on a server? I mean, when you want to see how many hours any user spent working in MemoQ. Um, yes, the fact that there is this, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember the exact name, but editing time, yeah, editing time. Uh, editing time that can be recorded uh, in the desktop client. It is very much on purpose uh, that that data is not sent up to the server. Um, we thought when this was uh, introduced, and I personally agree with that, 
uh, that it's a it's a trust thing. Uh, so people can ask their translators to send those reports to them. Uh, but honestly, I don't think we are going to send it up. Uh, but that that may change. So this the second part was my very very personal opinion that uh, that is there. I prefer to believe that uh, this amount of trust should be there between uh, a company and the people working for them. But this this second part is really just me. Um, yep, Christy is asking. Any plan for adding metadata to the light resources? I'm sorry, I don't understand this. Uh, uh, while we clean that up. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, the idea portal, Jeremy opened yeah. the question <laughs> of the idea portal. Um, for freelancers soon. For non-freelancers, uh, we are going to do that uh, in steps. Uh, so yeah, soonish. For non-freelancers, soonish is the most I can say about this. Um, yeah, Fernando is asking whether we can expect a UI refreshment anytime soon. If you mean the desktop client, uh, then I'm afraid uh, not a big one. Please don't expect a big UI refreshment anytime soon. Uh, the areas that we work on anyway, uh, we are trying to make them a little better, uh, but the software is huge. So doing a huge, a real, real revamp uh, would mean that we couldn't work on any new features for I don't know, a year, so for a very long time. Um, and we feel that is not the best use of, of our resources. Um, we are trying to do some incremental cleanup and I'm with you. Uh, I would love to do it. It's just, uh, I myself uh, find it uh, less important than a lot of things uh, the users are asking for and we have envisioned uh, but please, please just send in, send in your requests. So it doesn't mean that we are not doing anything uh, with, the, with the UI. It's just that there will be not a big rehaul uh, of everything. Um, Marek, I think this is again a feature request. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, yes, so how about, uh, Marek is asking, how about adding target language information on the reports tab? Uh, yes, I think, I don't know. <laughs> you are probably right. And Birgit added that time tracking might also be an issue in terms of data privacy laws. Uh, that's, that's again a good point. Uh, yeah, some laws agree with me, that's cool. <laughs> Okay. Oh, geez. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's um, uh, okay. So Christy uh, is saying that what he means is uh, regarding light resources, uh, that adding the same fields you have in TMs, for example, I can't reasonably answer this now. Um, uh maybe but that's again that's a feature request please send it in uh, <laughs> i'm sorry really answering feature requests on the fly it's that's very hard so unless we already have it um being researched or being developed uh i i really i really can't answer i mean none of us can really answer them reasonably uh, because I would have to ask about 15 questions before understanding the problem. So, yeah. 
that's what we have the, the portal for because, because there we can ask those 15 questions. Um, okay, so, uh, yep. Okay, yeah, word count in, weighted word count in progress report. Uh, okay. Uh, currently we take the raw data and calculate weighted word count externally but it would be perfect to see weighted word count by translator at a glance from within MemoQ. Okay, I understand what you mean, but I think uh, that it is not the progress report that you are actually using, but the post-translation analysis report. Of course, I don't actually know it. We have loads and loads of reports within MemoQ. Um, yep, feature request, please. Anonymous attendee is asked saying, activation process does not seem any clearer for those who will only get project-based licenses, not Cal. That's the same thing. Uh, that's the very same thing. They don't, have to, they don't have to activate the free trial. They can download MemoQ and on the very first page, uh, they can choose the, I will get my license from a server. I think that's the exact phrasing. Let me double check. I will get a license from a server. So it is not about Cal. Uh, you, don't, you don't even need to know. You don't have to know if it's Cal, project based, whatever based, anything based. Uh, you can, you know, all you need to know is that you will get it from a server. Uh, and of course, your credentials for the server. Somebody please take over. <laughs> yeah, I was in the meantime uh, responding in writing uh, to a number of those questions. Uh, the, uh, there's one about, I don't know, a UPC time zone for job assignment template. I believe that's still either Weber or Mariano. Um, but I think there's a reason why we use UTC. Correct me if I'm wrong, Veronica or Mariana. Sorry, I was typing another answer. What did you say? <laughs> it's uh, it's due dawn. When can Memoki server apply server's time zone in job assignment yeah. template? Currently, it uses UTC as default. I don't know. Um... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think <laughs> no. it does. Uh, <laughs> uh, it has to. I mean, it. This is a bit, a, a bit, bit complex. Um, yeah, um, Duke. If you could, if you could extend a bit what you are asking, then we will answer it. Uh, in writing, okay, because I'm not exactly sure what apply means here and template means here. So yeah, please add the, uh, some further details and we'll, we'll answer it in writing. And I can see Veronica, you have one that you would like to answer live, but I believe you already have. No, I have answered that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I mean, when a PM wants to instantly export this report from the server for workload calculation for a past month. Uh, I, I think, I mean, maybe I don't understand, but um, it's still this editing time thing, thing I think. Um, it's uh, this information that is available for people using a desktop client that they can record <clears throat> segment by segment, how much time they worked on those segments. That information is not sent to the server, even if they do it in a checkout project. And that is on purpose. Uh, what I could add, I was able to add to it uh, my personal view of why it's better like this. Uh, Birgit added that it is probably, at least in some countries, uh, is a legal requirement that this data is not sent. Um, so 
I'm sorry, you can't do it. <laughs> because it is, I think it is, it is sensitive data. Um, so if you want to track uh, the time your colleagues spend on stuff, you have to use something else or you, or you need to figure out a way of collecting and um, I don't know, compiling uh, the reports that the translators themselves can give you. Uh, okay, so you cleared it that um, the job assignments sent to vendors, the deadline is still set to time in UTC. Uh, Duke, can you please send a support ticket? Um, I, I still, I still, yeah, there are a lot of moving parts in these, in these, um, uh, in these time zone things. So there is uh, the server machines time zone. There is the time zone of the MemoQ server. There is the time zone of the, of the, uh, project manager's computer. <laughs> there is the time zone of the translator's computer. Uh, so there were a lot of moving parts. It would be a lot easier to answer this in writing. Oh, Nicola is asking whether there are any plans to make windows of online projects and their checkout copies a bit more visually <laughs> distinct. I'd love that. <laughs> Please submit that request and add hundreds of votes to it so that we can do it. <laughs> uh, I would, I would, you know. So this is a this is a kind of a thing where I believe users want it, but I don't have any proof. So please prove me right. Please show me that hundreds and hundreds of users would like would want this, and then we can do it. Uh, uh, Fernando is asking about Windows 11 and MemoQ. No idea. Yeah, we, we've uh, taken a, no reports so far. Yeah, we, had, we asked our QA uh, guys and they ran it on Windows 11. And so far we have not seen any issues. Yeah. And Christina also asked about what can we expect for MemoQ 10.0. Uh, so there is some something, uh, I, I can't answer this. And that is exactly because after 9.9, .9, it's not 10.0. <laughs> Most probably not. Uh, so it, it uh, most probably is going to be 9.10. Uh, so I'm not even sure when 10.0 is coming. It will come when, we, when something huge is done. So it's a surprise. It's, it's going to be a surprise for you and for us too, but for us, it's going to be a surprise a little earlier than for you. Um, yep, so. There's one more. Uh, Nikolai is asking, just in case for rookies like me, how do I submit a feature request for ideas? <laughs> if, you're, if you have already been invited uh, to the IDEO portal, then you should have all the information in the invitation email. If you have not been invited yet, you have two options. Uh, you can wait a little longer because uh, soon or soonish, as Veronica pointed out, We'll have invitations sent out to all our freelancers uh, with valid SMAs. Or alternatively, if you feel very strongly about contributing to ideas, uh, send an email to ideas at memoq.com and, uh, and someone will uh, respond to you. Okay, so that's, that's about Maria Christina uh, That's That's another uh, feature request, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not sure what copy automatically uh, means, but you know, what do you want to copy the, the entire uh, concordance search? Or it's you know, it's uh, you have control C uh, by default, but uh, if it's something more, then please submit it as, a, as an idea as a feature request. <laughs> 